Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, today we wanted to do a quick video just illustrating how to set up and when to use uh, one of the features in our hybrid Backup Sync 3 software, which is the two-way sync option. Uh, so I'll show you how to set it up. I'll create a job and I'll show you a job that I've already uh, got running that's uh, got a considerable amount of data just to show you how the different functions work between the, uh, the different NAS we're setting this up with. Um, so firstly, what you will need is you will need two NAS. So what I'm running this on here is a, a TVS-H1288X um, and also I've got a, a TVS-882T here as well. Um, they're linked via one of the uh, QNAP um, 10 gig switches, so that's all going to be a 10 gig network transfer between the two. Uh, one thing I will point out is we do have our uh, QFinder Pro software here which shows the firmware versions of each. Uh, so the H1288X is running QUTS Hero, uh, version uh, H451. Um, and we've got the 882 here, which is not a hero based NAS, and that's running uh, QTS 4.5.2. Um, so this will work whether or not you're using um, QTS on both NAS, hero on both NAS, um, or a mix of the two. It will work the same no matter which way you have it set up. The hybrid backup sync 3 software, that software is exactly the same uh, between the two units. So the first step that you need to do is create uh, a server on one of the units. So what I've done here on the 882T is under the services section within Hybrid Backup Sync 3, um, I've come down to the RTRR server option here. And in there, I have set um, the RTR server enabled. I've set a password for the two. Um, it's not a two digit password, that's just what it reduces it to. So I've enabled this on the 882T. So by enabling the server on the 882T, that means the other NAS is going to be where you create the job. So that's going to have the listings of the folder pairs um, and uh, the policies, the options. It really doesn't matter which way around you set it um, with the two-way sync because once the backup job has run, um, whatever paired folders you've set are going to be identical between the two units that you've got there. It's all going to be exactly the same. So you can enable whatever other options that you want within the RTRR server. If you're doing this uh, to a remote connection where the, uh, the speed and, and latency uh, would be quite low, you can enable the TCP BBR congestion control, which will help improve the connection between the two. And you'll see a setting to enable this in the uh, two-way sync backup job when I create it as well. Um, if you pair that setting on both units, it's going to work much faster over the, uh, the slower connections. Uh, that the, the internet would have. As I'm doing this across the LAN, I haven't got it enabled. So having that enabled is the first step, then you go to the other NAS to effectively create the job. So over here in Hybrid Backup Sync 3, what I would do first of all is I would come down to the job section. If I show you the services section on this unit, the RTRR server itself um, is disabled. You don't need it on on the one you're setting the job on, just the one you're sending the data to. So if I go to the sync option, you can see I've got a, a job created there um, with uh, just over a terabyte of data in it. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click create and I'm going to choose the option for the two-way sync job. So we've got a few different options. Active sync um, is a, a pull job. So that would pull data from a remote NAS or a remote destination um, cloud provider or anything like that into this NAS. One-way sync job would send data from this NAS to another location, either another NAS um, or a cloud provider. Um, and two-way sync job must work with a, another QNAP NAS or one of the cloud providers. So here's a few different cloud provider options that you can use it with. So first of all, I'll set one up to the remote NAS. I've already added it in here into the account details, so I can just select it. If you were to um, add a new NAS, it's simply a, a case of typing in the, uh, the IP address of the NAS you've got the RTRR server set on. If it's remote, you will need to port forward a port and you can change that port number here. Um, but it must just match the port number that you've uh, created in the RTRR server settings on the other NAS. Um, and you've also got an option down here to type in the password and whether or not you want to use an SSL connection. Uh, so if you were to go into the NAS, you can do things like uh, speed tests for any that are set up. So it will give you the speed of the connection between the two. Um, I've got them connected with a 10 gig link, so it's coming up showing that that's working great. So I'm going to select that NAS. So now my option is to add paired folders between the NAS. So I've already got one with the backup folders there. So let me do one with the 
public folder. I think I've got a test file there. So if we go OK on the test folder, and then we can choose where to send it. So I'll just put that straight into the, uh, the public folder over there as well. We'll click OK. And now you get a conflict policy section at the bottom to choose what happens if there is a conflicting file uh, between the two NAS. So here, rename local files will be if there's the same file on both NAS, um, the NAS on this NAS that I'm setting the job up on um, will have the file renamed to something different so it doesn't overwrite it. Uh, so you get to choose the different options there with the conflict policy. So I'll just leave it on the default for now. Click next. Now you get to run a schedule so you can um, run it after another job and all your other backup jobs will come up in the list. You can set a schedule individual to this specific uh, job that you're creating. So perhaps you want it to happen uh, daily at uh, 1 a.m. So you can set that. And if you only want it to happen for two weeks, you can set an end date for the job to uh, automatically stop as well if you want to. So we'll click OK. And as we scroll down, we can choose to sync now. So as soon as I create the backup job, it will start uh, the job. Uh, we'll click Next. Um, so here you've got different options for enabling filters and you can do different filters for different criteria. We've got quite a few options that you can enable in here if you need to. And the next option down is policies. So this is where you would use the TCP BBR congestion control. Um, even if it's ticked here, it will not function if you don't have it ticked on the RTRR server that you set up earlier. Um, I'm going to untick it because I didn't tick it on the server, uh, but that would help if you were using um, the more remote connections. Um, you can also integrate it with QAN. Uh, we'll, we'll do a video about that going forward. Um, and there's some extra options that you can do down here. Some of them will only be available if it's a one-way sync, uh, but we do have some options for compressing and things like that if you wanted to enable it. There's just a couple of options about the um, what happens if the job fails, does it trigger a notification, and you can also lock it into a specific network card if you want. So you can manually select a network adapter um, or you can um, just let it do it automatic where it will choose the, the highest performing interface for you. So it's automatically selected 10 gig for me, so that's okay. So we'll click next. So now we just get a summary of everything we've created. So we're doing a public test backup on the uh, 882T, uh, sorry, on, on this NAS to the public folder on the 882T. Uh, and we're gonna rename any local files and the schedule was um, every day at 1 a.m. and we'll just click create. Uh, because I told it to um, sync now, it's immediately going to run the job now. So it's going to effectively uh, sync that job right now. So we can go to the report. Um, it says it's syncing. So it's doing a bit of a comparison between files. You can pull up details of the job as well. So as the job's running, you can also pull up more details down at the bottom there. So it's gonna tell you how fast the transfer is happening between the two NAS. Um, I think the 882T has only got two hard drives in it, so I'm not expecting full 10 gig speeds. There's no SSDs or anything in that one. Uh, so I've got a 60 gig uh, file called test.txt. Uh, so that's copying over right now. Uh, so that'll be finished in a couple of minutes. Uh, so that's how you would set up a, a backup job that's already run. If you wanted to go back and see some other options, you can go look at an existing job that you already have. You can click the report on that and you can see the history of that job. So that's been running just fine uh, for a little while. So I did have it set to run every five minutes. So if you did want it to run more often than once a day, um, the lowest possible time that you can set this to run is once every five minutes. It will not let you set the timings any lower than every five minutes. Um, but that would make you have uh, effectively the exact same files on both NAS. And because both NAS um, are replicating to each other, this would be a great solution if you had uh, two NAS in two separate offices, but you wanted everybody to have local access to the same data. So somebody could open up an Excel file in Office One, change the data, change the files, um, and as soon as they click Save, that data within the next five minutes is going to be on the other NAS as well for anybody else that wants to open it there. Uh, so that's that's the sort of main main use case of something like this. Um, this would also work with uh, a cloud provider. So if I was to create here a, uh, a two-way sync job, but this time I can pick a cloud provider like uh, Google Drive. There's Google Drive. I've got a QNAP one added. You can click select and it's exactly the same setup. So you would add a paired folder. So I would say I want to do the public uh, test folder that I created. So we'll click that and we're going to add the paired folder up in Google Drive there. So I've got one here. Uh, just called public. So I'll just put it in there. Gives you a quick summary. You've got the same conflict policies that you had before. Uh, we'll click next and you can choose different options. 
Um, this will allow you to do uh, real-time synchronization um, with a cloud provider, but between the two NAS, it's uh, a, max, a minimum of every five minutes. Uh, so here we can click next on this one and you get pretty much the same options for the filters, uh, policies for TCP BBR. So for, for this backup, um, I would use TCP BBR um, just because it's it's going off to the internet for this, this type of backup now. Um, so here we've got the same options for the, the logs. We'll click next and we'll click create. So when you set up a real-time synchronization job, it says uh, not started there at the top. So you actually have to enable those. So if I was to go into the job list, we can see it's not started. But as soon as I click start on that, it's now going to sync and do the first job. And once the job has finished, it's going to sit there and keep trying to run that same backup all the time. Um, as soon as a file's changed, it's going to copy the data there. This is a really good option to use with a cloud provider because it allows you to work directly from the cloud storage as well. Um, so if you do have a, a remote worker, so everybody in the office could be using the NAS, fast local access, anything that they do is changed immediately and put up to the Google Drive uh, option that I've selected. And anybody working remotely, well, they can either access the NAS directly or they could work directly from the Google Drive um, so that they can, uh, from, from Google Drive or any cloud provider, and they would be able to save their changes. And as soon as they make a change, because it's a two-way sync, it would also come down to the NAS as well with that type of setup. I'll just go to the uh, 882T here. This is the one I haven't been setting any jobs up, but we do get information uh, popping up in the logs that backup jobs are starting. When the job is running, you will get a, a task that's running there. Um, so the job has finished now, but uh, every uh, every night it's going to set off the new backup. Uh, if you go into the jobs section um, on incoming jobs, you're going to see that we've got the two jobs set up now. You do see that in the summary page as well here. So my jobs are zero because I've not created any on this NAS but I do have some incoming jobs and you can just click that and it takes you straight there. And from this NAS, if you ever wanted to, you can stop uh, the, uh, the access of those jobs. So if you, for some reason, wanted one of those NAS to not send their job to this one, you can suspend, uh, sp suspend that from here. So you do get a bit of information, even on the, uh, the NAS that's classed as the destination in this setup, they would still have some, some element of control over this as well. Okay, hopefully that's uh, that's useful and you've been able to see uh, how to set up two-way sync and, and when it can be useful. Um, but it's a, it's a very useful feature, uh, very feature rich for, for getting the same data in two separate locations. Um, so yeah, and if there is any questions, uh, please please do ask them below. Uh, we are fairly quick at responding. Um, so anybody that, that, that needs some more information on this, uh, just let us know and we'll try to get back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.